Welcome to this video on After Later Audio's G&T, otherwise known as Gates and Triggers. This is a great utility module for converting gates and trigger signals, of course, but it also has a couple other tricks up its sleeve. With the internal routing, it's easy to patch things like trigger delays and flams, and with some self-patching with the help of a mixer, we can create a looping gate that oscillates up to audio levels. You add a function generator to that, and you have pulse width control. But first, the rundown. Here we have 2HP module. On the top here, we have two LEDs, one for in and one for out. In shows the gate in coming into this gate input. Anytime the gate's high, the light is on. The out light is anytime this bottom gate output is high, this out light will be on. Here we have our gate to trigger input, our rise trigger output, anytime the gate rises, it sends a trigger, and then our fall trigger output, anytime our gate falls, it sends a trigger here. This fall is internally routed to our trigger input here. This is our trigger input, which ignores the fall of a gate if there is a gate in there. When this trigger is initiated, it starts our gate. The gate length is determined by this knob here. And our gate output again comes out this gate output here. And then we have our fall output here, which is actually a trigger, not a gate, anytime this function gate here goes low. And that's it. That's the whole module. Actually, let's go a little bit deeper into this and see what it does. First, we'll look at the trigger to gate section, and then we'll go back and look at the gate to trigger section, because there's some internal routing that happens that makes more sense if we explain this first. I'm going to plug a trigger in on every single beat, and I'm going to put the gate into the concussion VCA. So we have a nice short gate and a longer gate here. Then we have our fall output. You can see it's a very quick trigger that comes out of our fall output every time the gate falls. It won't interrupt your gate if it receives a new trigger. It will it will continue its first gate and then once that ends, it'll receive the next trigger. And that's why we get less triggers coming from the fall output when our gate length is longer, even though we have all these triggers coming in. So I'm going to plug the gate back into the VCA here with the lower pitch. And now the fall is going to go into the snare here. So you can see when we have the longer gate, our fall happens later and doesn't happen as often. I'll put a trigger in that is on every fourth beat. So now I'm going to plug the gate into the concussion's VCA here, which is actually going to trigger the concussion a little bit and open up the VCA. I'm also going to send this gate into a sequential switch to send a super high voltage out into the LFO on this sound that we're hearing here. And then I'm going to plug this fall to trigger that sequential switch in between the walk output of SHTH and no voltage and then this super high voltage. And now you can see it's sequencing between them, making interesting sounds each time this gate falls. It's changing how it sounds. Now that we've looked at the trigger to gate section, let's look at the gate to trigger section, which is these top three jacks here. The top one is our gate input, which accepts our gate, senses the rise of that gate and the fall of that gate. It's going to give us trigger outs on the rise of the gate and the fall of the gate. 
And the interesting trick up its sleeve with this module is the fall output here is internally routed to the trigger input here when this is unpatched. Meaning when we get a gate in here on the fall, it's going to start this gate. And then on this fall, we're going to get that fall output. And then we're also going to still get our gate output. So it's a really interesting way to turn one gate into three triggers and another gate. Okay, now let's patch this up. So first I have a varied gate length eight step sequence coming from Bloom. And let's look at the triggers on each rise of the gate. So we can see each time the in light lights up, we're getting our gate. Now let's patch this to a kick drum here so we can hear it. And now we could hear with the fall plugging in to a snare, we can hear the different lengths of our gate. And we can delay this fall even more by plugging into this last fall, which when we have our gate length all the way short it's basically what it was before but we can delay it now with this knob now we'll take a look at this as a trigger delay i have a trigger coming in that's firing on each fourth beat now i want to molt this first to my kick so i get that each time and then I want to delay it for my snare and I want some control over that delay. What I could do is plug into the fall here and it's similar to what we looked at before with the gate rise and fall but we get to control the fall right here. To add on to the delayed trigger, GNT has another trick here where I could do a looping gate. You can see in maths here, I have just a general gate that I could control going into channel two with the volume all the way up. I have the sum output going into the gate input on gates and triggers. So you could hear right now, nothing. And when I release, we hear the gate. That's because it is doing the internal routing to this trigger when this gate falls. And then, so this gate we're hearing here, we could control with the gate length, of course. And just the gate out is the audio, which is what we're hearing here. Now the neat trick is routing the fall output from our gate into the mixer here, into channel three, which I have all the way down right now, so you can't hear it. But when I turn this up, it's going to send the fall trigger every time this gate ends back into gates and triggers, causing it to oscillate. And it's a very wide pulse width, as you can see here, like 99.9%. And we can get it into audio range. Now an interesting trick to get this even higher pitched is we actually turn down the attenuator, attenuverter on maths, channel three. And the lower we go, the higher pitch it goes. Until it eventually stops picking up the trigger right there. So we can control pitch with this attenuator and our gate length here, which is really interesting. So if you want a nasty wide pulse with oscillator here, it's a cool trick. 
one more thing I want to try to be able to adjust the pulse width here is actually take our trigger and put it into the trigger input on maths here. And then I'm going to take our end of rise output so we can get a delay on it and put that into the mixer here. So it's going to delay that trigger even more, giving us some pulse width. And the fall knob should be our pulse width control. Let's start with our trigger. It's acting exactly how I thought. And here we have pulse width control, which we can CV control on maths too, of this weird pseudo oscillator. But now our volume control doesn't adjust the pitch anymore because it's the end of rise and not the trigger, which has that more triangular shape, more uh, ramp down shape. And that's that neat trick. Now let's get this noise out of the way and listen to it in a more musical context. for watching this video. See you next time.